I think I may have found the worst romantic anime of all time. Let me introduce you to Convenience Store Boyfriends, the blandest story of all time. Jessica, bland, boring Jessica. If she was a spice, she'd be flower. Now, I'm a big romance slash slice of life girly. I've seen all the classics. Fruit Basket, Horimiya, Maidsama, Oran High School Host Club. You name it, I've seen it. But there always comes a time when I finally binge-watched everything current and available in the rom-com genre, forcing me to dig deeper and watch some lesser-known animes. And it was during one of these times that I stumbled upon this monstrosity of a show, Convenience Store Boyfriends. I looked up the synopsis on Wikipedia, and this is what it said. A story that centers around a group of male high school students who always stop at a convenience store on their way home from school, and follows their everyday journey as they explore the sentiments and feelings of love right up until they confess it to their chosen ones. And I was like, oh nice, so this is going to be somewhat like to Sunday Children, where there's just a bunch of interconnecting stories that all focus on high school love, which is right up my alley, so bring it on. Then I clicked on the first episode, and it was greeted by this. Two minutes of him just running? I mean, it's not the worst opening I've ever seen in cinema, but it's obviously really boring. I think they were trying to get us pumped up in anticipation, but it's just too long of a scene. And I have the attention span of a two-year-old. But regardless, I pushed onward, only to find that it just gets worse. After that, it opens up to the main theme, which is just a bunch of scenes from the anime edited to fit the song. Some might call this lazy, but animating is a lot of work, so I totally get it from a time and money saving point of view. And here we can see all of the main characters that are going to be in the story, approximately six couples, maybe seven if we include the convenience store workers. Not really sure what their deal is, but they all are totally, definitely going to have their own love arcs that are really well fleshed out. Spoiler, we don't even learn most of their names. <laughs> We meet two of the male protagonists, Haruki and Toa, on their way to their first day at a high school, where they nearly get strong-armed into joining the handicrafts club, but the vice president and president of the student council intervene. Which, as we know from the opening theme, they will be incredibly important characters with their own little love stories. Can't wait for that! School passes, and Haruki agrees to meet Toa at, you guessed it, the convenience store. While he's waiting, he recognizes the girl standing next to him in a very vague flashback. This, after all, is only the first episode, so you can't expect too much. She does not seem to recognize him, but after he helps her clean up a mess she makes, she buys him a popsicle. Toa witnesses this interaction and tries to push Haruki into confessing his love, which Haruki denies even exists. Next day, same stuff. The boys head to the convenience store and entertain us with thrilling conversations such as this. I think Akira might have broken my damn neck. Ah, you just slept funny again. Yeah, you're right. So let me sleep in the bed for once. If you want to sleep in the bed, then go home. It's cold, man. Some best friend you are. <laughs> Try your only friend. We learn that Toa is a class rep who often shirks his duties and flirts with his female counterpart, who absolutely detests it. Why did you even bother becoming a class rep anyway? Uh, cause it seemed like a good idea? <clears throat> then take it more seriously! <laughs> hey, you're actually pretty cute when you're angry, you know that? Now, if that scene made you slightly uncomfortable, just wait. It gets so much worse! After storming away from Toa, the female class rep runs into the girl from the convenience store, and they are formally introduced as Mami and Miharu. They bond over books and discuss Mommy's issues with Toa in this unusually animated scene. Why were you in such a hurry before? What? You were like Cinderella running from the ball before her coach turned back into a pumpkin. <laughs> You're such a romantic. <laughs> I know, I do love fairy tales. It's a cute thought, but it's not even close. 
The truth is, I was trying to get away from a shallow idiot boy. Really? Who? Toa Honda, one of my classmates. He never leaves me alone. He entertains himself by teasing me all the time. Do you know any guys like that? Well, maybe in grade school I did. Yeah, he's a child. A truly annoying child. I'm not sure if it was because of lack of funding or a purposeful artistic choice, but throughout the series we get a lot of these weird scenes where nothing is actually being animated, just really long voiceovers that don't make sense with what we are seeing visually. Like this scene that literally happens right after, where Toa and Haruki are talking about literally the most boring things ever, while the scenes that are also used in the opening title sequence are just played. Anyhow, Toa ends up going to the convenience store after soccer practice and catches mommy reading shoujo manga. How embarrassing! Couldn't be me! <laughs> she runs away in a panic, Toa chases after her and then creepily hits on her while she continually asks him to stop, forcing her to kick him so she can run away again. Thus concluding episode 1 of 12. Oh god. <sighs> Okay, so the second episode starts off with a flashback of a girl reading a book called The Mermaid Prince to Haruki. She gives him the book as she leaves to go home with her mom, and on the back of the cover he learns that her name is Miharu Masashiki. Well, that's what Haruki says despite the book only having a last name on it. I don't know, maybe the guy can't read? He later runs into her again in middle school, and has been watching her from afar ever since. Toa and Haruki stop at the convenience store before going to school, and they have this fun interaction. Man, I don't get it. How do you know what's okay to do and what isn't? This again? Oh yeah, this again. Mon, what you did was totally sexual harassment. Oh man, it didn't come close. Which then leads into this. Listen man, take it easy. What do you mean? Just, like, try not to bother that class rep so much. Tone it down a little. Jeez, man. I mean it, dude. She doesn't like it. What? But when a girl says no, that's a yes, isn't it? Not really. Not really, Harky? Not really? More like absolutely fucking not. I'm sh pretty sure I don't have to explain why that is the most problematic thing a character could ever possibly say. And we're supposed to be rooting for this guy? That's a hard no for me. Not that he would listen. The show came out in 2017, and the novel was written in 2015. We shouldn't be having this discussion. I hate it here. Ugh. Moving on, but not really. Toa continues to be a weird little creep and tells Mommy to smile. Like, what the actual fuck? Mommy asks him to leave her alone, again, but he can't take a hit, so she vents to Miharu about her problems. Miharu offers to help by asking Haruki to intervene, since Toe and him are best friends. Which, to his credit, he has been doing. We saw it earlier. Regardless, he again tells Toa that Mommy is super uncomfortable with his behavior, and then Toa gets all pouty, as if to suggest he's actually sincere about his love for her. Then he lashes out against Haruki by judging his love life, or rather lack of it. Then they wrestle into this compromising position. Toa doubles down that he's serious about Mommy and explains why he likes her. So Haruki somewhat reluctantly decides to help Toa work out an understanding with Mommy. The next day, the four meet in front of the convenience store, and Haruki begs for a second chance on Toa's behalf. Mommy agrees to it, but with some new boundaries in place. Please stop barking out class rep when you want to talk to me. <clears throat> and no more unsolicited touching. I don't like it. I got it. If you don't need anything, then don't pester me. Oh, come on, you're no fun. Toa. Then all four of them walk to school together. Episode 3, here we go. Harky runs for another grueling minute-long animation, which I guess is just their favorite way to start off an episode. As he reaches school, he crashes into track runner Natsu, and apparently hits him so hard that it leaves a bruise. 
School ends, and Toa tells Haruki that while visiting his mom, a nurse, at the hospital, he saw Miharu there chatting up another guy. Haruki continues to act disinterested in Miharu, maybe because he straight up actually doesn't care, which frustrates Toa. Toa then complains to Mami, who also doesn't care, when they spot the guy walking around their high school. The two follow him to the cooking club, where they meet Nozomi and learn that the guy is named Nasa and is the head chef. Meanwhile, Haruki witnesses a confrontation going down between Natsu and the seniors in the track club. The librarian, who I guess is also a student, walks past them and drops her books. Haruki steps in to pick up her belongings, while the seniors tell them to hurry it up. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what the plan was here, but I guess it works out as the student council members arrive just in time and break up the scene. Despite literally not being involved at all, Haruki is punished, along with Natsu, for making a scene and is assigned to work on the sports committee. Natsu and Haruki bond a little bit over their love for sports, but honestly, it's a pretty boring and irrelevant conversation. Toa and Mami, on the other hand, are still stalking Nasa, and they follow him into the hospital. He catches them and confronts them, and we later learn that Nasa barely knows Miharu, they just happen to see each other often at the hospital. This clearly is not foreshadowing that Miharu is sick and or possibly dying. I don't even know what made you say that. That's not a very overused trope or anything. Haruki runs to the convenience store in the rain and buys an umbrella only to realize he doesn't have enough money to pay for it. Luckily, Miharu is also there, and she buys it for him. They briefly walk together and have the most bland conversation, but somehow it leads to Miharu revealing that she does not have a boyfriend. Yay! Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed meeting Natsu and his librarian lover, because we never see them again. That's right, their story is completely axed from the show, and neither character has a single speaking line from here on out. I guess this was due to budget cuts, or maybe the realization that a second season was unlikely to be renewed, but like, why introduce the characters in the first place if we're never gonna see them again? They could have easily wrapped up their love story in an episode or two, but we're just left completely in the dark as to who they are or why they're important. I would like to scream, but I live in an apartment complex, so... Moving on. Episode 4. Nothing happens. Okay, technically some stuff happens, but it's all irrelevant. Toa and Mommy pair up to run the three-legged race for sports day, which Mommy is embarrassed about doing. So there's a montage of them training together and getting closer or whatever, but we don't even actually get to see them compete in the event. They literally decided not to animate them running the race, which is just bizarre to me because that's literally what the whole episode is about. Why do we witness all these long montages of them working on the sports festival if they weren't even going to show us the festival? I don't... I don't get it. Moving on to episode 5, Mommy offers to repay Toa for helping her train for the sports festival, so he tries to coerce her into a date, which she agrees to under the condition that Haruki and Miharu also attend. We only see, like, a minute of this date before the intro theme starts, and it's all over. I honestly don't know why they wrote it like this. Also, why is Miharu wearing a fedora? Maybe I'm just a hater, but I hate it. Toa continues to be a creep when Mommy doesn't do things his way. Man, she's no fun. And then the two girls head over to Miharu's house. Mommy spills the tea about how she truly feels about Toa. I hate him. But then they try to spin it like, Oh no, she actually means she really likes him! Often in shoujo manga, the girl likes the boy, but tells him that she hates him. Uh. Like, can you all not hear? She said she doesn't like him! Maybe you should, I don't know, believe her? But Toa doesn't listen to shit, so he tries to get Mommy to go to the fireworks festival with him, when she clearly is not interested. But our guy Toa, he never gives up. He too gets a running scene, although not as nearly as long or as painful as any of Haruki's, and walks Mommy to cram school. Again, she's like, stop, but Toa just takes his opportunity to confess his love for her. I feel like they're trying to go for the oblivious trope, like the, 
oh, he's just being nice. He's not actually into me. But the way it's written is all wrong. Clearly Toa is just an ass. But yeah. Anyways, Mommy is like, leave me alone. Again. But then we pretend like it's because she has low self-esteem and not because he's a creep. And then she tells him she hates him. But as we know from earlier, apparently that means I like you in manga world. And they kiss as the fireworks go off. Episode 6 starts off with a familiar flashback. Then we get one of the most bland conversations and montages in the history of filmmaking. Besides, the Alzora Festival's almost here. Yeah, everyone's getting real fired up. There's a lot left to do. I know, totally. That's why we get to spend more time together after school. <sighs> Whatever, dude. not emphasize enough how often these long filler shots happen. It's every episode. Toa thinks he's made progress in wearing down Mommy while she acts like a traumatized animal. Oh, no, Miharu. It's, um, uh, uh, you, um, you just kinda caught me off guard, I guess. I'm just saying that if that was my friend, I would not be congratulating her. I would be calling the police. Miharu and Haruki talk about the new relationship forming between their mutual friends, and then Miharu asks Haruki if he has a crush, where he makes this face. Is he going to shit himself? Also, how much more directly do you want her to ask? Like, that's the perfect fucking time to reveal that you're into her, but I guess he doesn't even know he's into her? I don't know. I feel like they're really trying to milk this will they or won't they trope, and it's bullshit. Next day, same shit. Haruki and Miharu talk about books while sitting in the park. So, like, do you have a favorite book? Uh? Or it can be your second favorite. Well, I, uh, so no, what about you? Huh? What now? What's yours? Uh, well, I, I'd have to think about it. I, I guess, um... Yeah, I do. Uh, I knew it! What's it called? The Merman Prince, I think. Oh, wow! You're kidding! I had that one, too! <sighs> the pictures are so cute. I remember them all. <sighs> Miharu. About that book. indeed do just spit it out but it's okay because he gets another shot the following evening when the two explore the school's setup for the cultural festival and come across the book that started it all the mermaid prince you went to wakaba kindergarten also right uh, you did too bye bye <laughs> that book it didn't belong to me originally. There was a girl who read it to me, and then she let me have it. <sighs> Since then, it stayed in my mind. Because of that, she's always been special to me. Miharu, are you possibly... Finally, our boy has said what he needs to say, but Miharu? She just fucking dips. <laughs> what could possibly have prevented her from responding? Maybe she's sick and or dying? Who fucking knows? Also, if you thought we were going to get to see the cultural festival, you're crazy. This is convenience store boyfriends we're talking about. Do you not remember the sports day episode? We only get to watch incredibly boring and long montages of them preparing for the events, not the actual events themselves. Honestly, it could have been refreshing and new, since cultural festivals are a very overused trope in shoujo anime. A fun trope, but definitely overused. But they literally just do montages and nothing else. Why? So instead, we get Haruki very poorly trying to describe what happened with Miharu. 
I might have done it this time. What? Hold on, does that mean what I think it does, dude? Huh? Whoa, you were holding out on me. As another dude, I can totally relate to how you feel. But you should never do that without consent. What the- uh, What? Don't fucking act like you know what consent is, Toa. Only a few episodes ago, you thought no meant yes. Get the fuck out of here. Anyways, most of episode 7 is irrelevant. It's about the student council president and his love life, which is never brought up again after this episode. We literally never see either character again, a very common trend for this anime. The only key scene that you need to know about is this. Have you heard the story of the Lover's Bridge, Haruki? What story? When I was a first year, there was a legend going around. If a boy and a girl crossed the bridge together at dusk, they'd be together forever. But can we take a minute to listen to this guy? But perhaps if I'd been more sincere, God might have decided to smile upon me. Jesus fucking Christ, this guy is so melodramatic. What's to believe? God abandoned me long ago. Why does he say these things? Oh my god! The episode concludes with Haruki and Miharu making amends. In other words, they completely ignore the elephant in the room and pretend that conversation never happened. Episode 8 is just as long and boring. Toa takes Mommy to a dessert cafe she's been wanting to try. I rule it dates. But we soon see that Mommy has a strict curfew slash controlling parents who don't want her out late. Mommy decides to focus hard on her studies to get her grades back up so that her parents will let her have a social life again. Toa says that he'll support her, but saying is a lot easier than doing. Turns out he also has family issues. That he blah blah, stepdad! Do you always do everything he tells you to do? <sighs> and by the end of the episode, the two are at an impasse. We do get this very fun scene. Uh, Toa? Can we talk for a sec? Uh, no, I can't. Sorry, did you think your screen froze? No, that's just how they decided to edit it. This episode really begins to show the deterioration of any and all quality animation, as shown in this scene here. <sighs> what are you doing? I don't want to go home, man. Oh no, again? Shut up. I'm deeply troubled, okay? That bad, huh? Want to come over? Cool, can I? Come on, before I change my mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're the best, bro. Thank you. Uh, Ow. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting. Hey, Nozomi, I found the- Man, they're really out here trying to get away with not animating anything at all. Oh, also this girl? Yeah, remember her from the intro? The intro that showed all of our main characters? This is her one and only line. I guess if you want to know her name or anything else about her, you'll have to read the light novel. So, things are still awkward between Mommy and Toa, so Miharu decides to host a Christmas party where they can meet and make up, resulting in the most awkward party ever. It's just Haruki, Miharu, and Mommy, because Toa has to attend dinner with his family. You would think they would invite Naza and Nozomi, or maybe the student council president, but nah. All these characters are inconsequential, they've made that very clear, so why bother adding them in at all? Toa ends up ditching his family after receiving an I miss you text from mommy, which thank god for that, because his mom literally sounds like a robot. You're the most important thing in the world to me, Toa. And please know your stepdad understands that as well. Mommy, however, has a curfew, so she leaves the party early. Will Toa make it in time? Run, Toa, run! For exactly three minutes straight, Jesus. But he does make it in time. Or rather, Mommy decides to put her family in their place and break her curfew. They both apologize and hold hands while sitting in front of the convenience store. Meanwhile, Miharu gives Haruki a handmade scarf for Christmas. And then the worst Christmas-themed soundtrack plays in the background. End of episode 9. Episode 10. Nothing happens. 
Okay, I know I say that a lot, but seriously, this show is so slow. I guess they visited the shrine, but they decide not to animate it or even really talk about it. Also, why did they take the photo like this? At this angle? It's so high up and exaggerated. That's not how people take selfies. And the one of Toa and Mommy is literally the exact same as the group photo. They just crops the other two out. It seriously frustrates me. They couldn't even be bothered to do another pose or anything. Moving on, Miharu gets a cold, but Toa sees her out of the hospital while visiting his mom, so we know that's probably not true. She misses five days of school, and literally half the episode is just all of the characters looking wistfully out of windows to emphasize how worried they are about her. Finally, Miharu is well enough to go to the convenience store, where she runs into Haruki. They walk together for a while, including across the lover's bridge! Remember that very minuscule detail from before? Now it's paying off! For this one scene! And it's never brought up again! So worth all that build-up! Miharu basically confesses to Haruki in a very confusingly edited scene. convenience store boyfriend. I was so surprised. Normally my daydreams end as just that, daydreams. But sometimes they turn into something else. Way back then, I was totally nervous and shy. But then you showed up. And you jumped straight out of my daydream. It's like... Like you're my my actual boyfriend. I guess she wasn't in her monologuing for that flashback. She literally told Haruki point blank that she thought of him as her boyfriend. And you know how Haruki responds? He doesn't. At least not right away. He pauses for a very long time before responding that he thinks of her all the time. But he fucking hesitates so long, so Miharu gets ill and collapses, so who knows if she even heard any of it at all! <sighs> Episode 11 begins with Haruki and Toa waiting anxiously for an update on Miharu's condition. And guess what? She's in a coma! Apparently, Miharu was born with a weak heart and needs surgery, but for some reason she keeps putting it off. Anyways, Haruki tries to confide in Toa about what happened with Miharu, and Toa is such an ass about it! Hey Toa, are you awake? I am now. I told her I like her. At least I started to tell her. What the hell is wrong with me? Am I blind? She was suffering, and I didn't even realize how badly. That's why it's my- Stop that. Don't overthink it. Or do. I know you will anyway, but it's not worth it, man. What's your problem? Nothing. Good night. Like, not only is he a creep, but he's also a shitty friend. Then we get a bunch of really long, boring montages of all the friends, but mostly Haruki acting depressed since Miharu's in the hospital. These would feel more meaningful and dramatic if they didn't use long-winded shots just like this in every goddamn episode. Haruki visits Miharu in the hospital nearly every day, and he runs into her mother, who spills the tea. Huh, you look familiar to me. Did you happen to go to Wakaba Kindergarten? Huh? I couldn't put my finger on it yesterday. I see now. You look a lot like a boy who was once friends with Misora. Misora? That's right! Miharu has a fucking twin named Mizora. 
I nearly died in a laughing fit when I watched that the first time, which I'm pretty sure is not the intended move for this scene, but it's just so over the top ridiculous. Like, who would have seen that coming? So Misora was the one who Haruki met long ago, but she died in surgery, which is why Mihara probably refuses to get her heart fixed up. Very nice touch. This is also probably why she freaked out when Haruki asked her about the book. Honestly, I would have never guessed this ending because it's so outlandish. But now it makes sense why Haruki kept denying he had feelings for the girl he met in the past because he didn't love Misora, but he does love Miharu. I like Miharu Mashiki. Finally! <laughs> Anyways, Miharu finally wakes up in the hospital with Haruki by her side. Um. Haruki? Good morning. Hey, you're awake! Why did they pause for so long? Why is it so awkward? <laughs> oh no, what's wrong? Should I go and get a doctor? Pointing so awkwardly. Toa and Mommy arrive just in time to spare us from this misery. Bro, I need a hug, but not one where we actually embrace no homo. <laughs> Finally, we've reached the end. Episode 12. From here, it's all over. So basically nothing happens this episode. Seriously, though, nothing happens. Okay, we learn that Miharu is going to be transferred for her surgery. They're transferring her? Uh -huh. Oh no! Hit the heavy notes, guys! This is serious! Miharu confides in Haruki about her trauma with surgery, and my guy says absolutely nothing because he never does. Then they have this weird montage in the middle because we can't go one episode without it. Finally, the day of Miharu's transfer arrives and Toa and Mami see her off. Haruki is absent because he's at his swim meet, but he has Toa deliver an all too familiar book with a letter inside. Basically, he tells Miharu not to give up because he likewise is not going to give up at his swim meet. And I guess that's comforting to her, so she texts him to meet her at the convenience store. Which brings us back to that opening scene from episode one, where Haruki runs and runs until he reaches the convenience store where Miharu is at. This time, he has the courage to say what he's always wanted to say. Because I'm... I'm in love with... You. Wait, did... Did she hear it? Oh, okay, I guess she did. Yay! The end. And that's the story of Convenience Store Boyfriends. Wow, I'm so glad we got to meet all of those cool characters who each got equal screen time. I'm glad they didn't waste half of their showtime with pointless montages, bland dialogue, and animations that didn't reflect the scenes they were trying to portray. I found this quote on Wikipedia, which perfectly sums up this anime. It's a going-through-the-motions romantic drama with two male leads who both make you want to beat some sense into them with a baseball bat, and two girls without much fire or spirit in their souls at all. And honestly, couldn't have said it better myself. Toa is a creep, Haruki is an idiot, and Miharu and Mami don't do or say anything noteworthy. We're just watching characters on a screen exist in the most insufferable way possible. And they could have done so much better. I feel like if they had cut out all of those montages, we could have seen all six of the love stories as intended in 12 episodes or less. Okay, maybe not, but at the very least we could have met all the characters. And the convenience store employees? Are they supposed to be characters? Or are they supposed just to have this weird commentary on the events taking place? I mean, we see more of them than the other side characters in this show, yet they remain nameless on the Wikipedia page, so I guess their purpose is purely theatrical? To top it off, the animation itself is just very flat and unappealing considering it came out in 2017. They cut corners in 
nearly every way possible, literally reusing the same footage over and over again, or you see random footage of buildings instead of the characters interacting. The voice acting is also pretty bad, which is odd, considering the cast actually had some decent actors on it. I think it's probably the characters themselves that make the anime seem lifeless, along with some bad equipment that makes the audio sound almost worse than this video. I don't know, maybe I should read the light novel and see if it's nearly as bland? Look, if you have a free afternoon with absolutely nothing to do, meditate. Go outside. Watch paint dry. It will be a better use of your time, I assure you. Well, thank you for all suffering with me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! I'm from, I'm from.